What's up and welcome into another episode of Locked on Bulls. I'm Matt. That's Big Dave. Up ahead on today's program, we have to react to the recent interview from former Bulls executive VP and three-time champ John Paxson, who joined our guys Mark Schanowski and Stacey King on their Give Me the Hot Sauce podcast a few days ago. And on the back half of the show, we're going to be ranking where do the Bulls starting five fit in the best starting fives of the Eastern Conference. That's all ahead on a fresh Locked Off Bulls. Let's go. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Matt Peck and Big Dave Watson. Happy Labor Day, Bulls Nation, and welcome into Locked On Bulls. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you. I'm Matt Peck. You can follow me on Bull, uh, at Bulls underscore Peck on Twitter. You can follow my co-host Big Dave at Bow, B-A-W-L Sports. You can follow us at Locked On Bulls. Shoot us a text or leave us a voicemail at 331-979-1369, or you can also email us, LockedOutBulls at gmail.com. Big Dave, how was your Labor Day weekend? As you can see, I'm rocking a tank. I'm still yeah. up at the lake living life. Yeah. How are yeah. you, my friend? I I am I am beautiful. I don't think I'm more beautiful than how you feel because you wear it on your face and your body. All of your emotions, Matt, you wear it on yourself. So when I see you like this, it just makes me feel even better, man. And I just feel very happy that you're happy, sir. I really am. Well, I'm glad that we enjoyed that briefly because I'm about to get really <laughs> mad for a dumb reason. And that is, I listened to an interview with former Bulls VP of Basketball Ops, John Paxson, oh, who joined our guys, oh, Shinowski and Stacey King. Shout out. And um, a few different things that I want to touch on, Big Dave. And, and I'm very curious to get your thoughts as well. I think a lot of Bulls fans were very... Uh, very curious to see what Pax had to say because basically this is the first time he's spoken publicly yeah, since yeah. making this big front office overhaul uh, and, and giving up his seat at the head of the yeah. table. So mm-hmm. clearly he he has a lot of optimism about where this organization is headed. But let's start here, Big Dave, because a lot of Bulls fans are focusing on this one quote in particular. Okay. In the la- in the last three to four years, I realized and I relayed this information to Jerry and Michael. We had become stale, and I knew that. The fact that we made the decision to look outside the organization, one of the one of Jerry's great qualities, and Michael the same way, they're loyal. They just are, and it's a wonderful thing, and we're very lucky we have ownership like that. But I always felt like it was my responsibility to be honest in terms of where I thought we were. I just felt at times there was a comfortability in how we were doing things, and maybe we were not looking at other ways to approach this thing. So the last year and a half since we made the changes, it's been new life in the organization, and it was needed, mm-hmm. end quote, John Paxson. Mm-hmm. Big Dave, what are your thoughts when you hear that? Yeah, uh, I want to I want to start this by saying I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking because I'm here for other reasons everybody else is here, and that's to watch Matthew Pett lose his damn mind. Um, it's, it's definitely some revisionist history <laughs> on, on, on Paxson's part, uh, changing a few things right there. Uh, Saying, saying, but not doing, you know what I'm saying? Like if you, I, I get you. We, we, it feels like we were all saying these things and, but y'all were telling them, no, it's cool. Everything's great. You know, when you're talking about you're wrong, you know, uh, doing little petty kind of things, you know what I mean? Behind the scenes and stuff like that. And it took basically the all-star game uh, to put it on the national level of the ineptitude that was going on here in Chicago for the changes to truly honestly be made. Uh, but man, yeah, that's, oh. <laughs> I'm going to be a little nicer about it because I'm going to save all that for Peck. Um, but yeah, it, it was definitely some revisionist history from John Paxson, who who I definitely got love for. I, I don't I don't dislike Pax as much as I dislike Gar Foreman. I'll say that. But you can't get on there and, you know, change history a little bit. You know what I mean? He, he, he changed some things, you know what I mean? Like, he's trying to slide it in there. Like, he was saying little other stuff that I'm sure you'll get into, Matt, that I that I had an issue with. 
um, as far as, you know, people being angry and things like that. But as far as this is concerned, that, <laughs> that quote right there, definitely some uh, revisionist history on that one, Matt. But like I said, I'm, I'm going to get off this mic because I want to sit back and I'm, and I'm going to enjoy the show. Please, the, the floor is yours. I, I just want to watch this. I mean, my first thought was the last three to four years, things have gotten stale. Three to four? How about like seven to eight? The last seven to eight years had gotten stale. And the follow-up part of this conversation to Paxson mentions how excited he is that AK and Eversley are so aggressive, and he loves how yeah. aggressive yeah. they are. Hey, he John, did. what was stopping you from being aggressive? Laziness or incompetence? Or is it both? Because those are the only answers. The only thing that was stopping you from being aggressive was laziness and or incompetence. He watches a new front office come in and make all these moves, and he's like, wow. Wow, look at him go. Dude, you were sitting at the head of the table for almost 20 years. What did you do? What did you do? Nothing. And he said he they were trying to rebuild through the draft and and they were, you know, they, they couldn't get it done and that's what made him make this realization that they were stale and okay, maybe it's finally a, you know, time for a change. It's not just the last 3 or 4 years. You want to look at the Bulls draft history since they took Jimmy Butler in 2011? Because I'll tell you real quick. Here we go. Marquise Teague, Tony Snell, and Eric Murphy. Then Doug McDermott, where you traded up to get him, missing out on Nurkic and Gary Harris. Bobby Portis, good player, didn't make it work out here. Denzel Valentine and Paul Zipser, gone, (laughs) worthless. Lowry Markkinen, gone, didn't work out. Wendell Carter and Chandler Hutchinson, both gone. The Spurs just paid Hutch $4 million to go away. Kobe White, still here. That's it. That's the list. (laughs) And the one thing that the defenders of Gar and Pax have said over the years of people saying, they got to go, they got to go, but they draft well, but they draft well, but they draft well. Not in a decade. Not in the past decade, they haven't. Unbelievable. The fact that Paxson phrases this, like he's trying to take credit for making this amazing realization. Oh, I've had an epiphany. I suck at my job. How smart am I to figure out that I suck at my job? I guess I should finally step down. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. That was worth it. Um, let me inject uh, something Matt doesn't want to inject here, and that's something positive. Um, here's what I did like about the interview, and and it's what I've always liked about Pax is when he talked about the playing days of, of the first three championships. I like the behind the scenes stuff. I enjoyed it, Matt. I did. I love the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I love the story that when Phil Jackson called him <laughs> and basically told him, "I don't think you can play. I don't think you can play defense. I think you're trash." <laughs> you know, he basically challenged him. And John Paxson took that personally, as Michael Jordan so famously has said. Um, I love the fact that he was like, listen, I was just trying to stay in the league. I I was just trying to fight and scrap. Uh, I love the fact they talked about um, Mark Janowski hinted towards, you know, you might be seen. Some people might see you as just a calm dude, but, you know, you really are a bulldog kind of guy. And you got who yells that we kind of saw that, you know. Later on with Scott Skiles, we saw that come out and Vin- and Vinny Del Negro, for goodness sakes. We saw that come out later and that fire that came out of him. Um, so I like that aspect of it, hearing John Paxson kind of talk about that and wax poetically about those championship years and what that kind of meant and those behind the scenes stories. Um, what I didn't like is basically what Pat said. Um, there was you he did some really good things. I mean, I had a lot of love for Paxson and the baby bulls that he that he had. Um sure. I love I love the fact that he talked about the Antonio Davis trade because that that's kind of what I talk about when I talk about how I want a goon for this team. How he went out and got Antonio Davis and got a goon and kind of changed the culture of how teams come in and can't really push us around kind of thing. I like that aspect. I even like that little part, Matt, that he said about AK is kind of got some goon in him, and he likes you know going to push people around. I like that kind of stuff uh, that he was saying there. But man, when he started <laughs> when he started talking about you know guys are just angry and, and like. Oh. I get it. And you're right. They're angry and they're mad. But to absolve yourself from that situation and to act like people are just angry for no reason, like there is like there isn't plenty of ammunition behind it as to right. why they were mad at what was going on with the organization. Um, when you can when you continually are, you know, lied to 
and and told you know half truths and mm-hmm. you know you kind of do behind the scenes kind of things fans see that media people see that and they're like these guys are lying to us so that's the that's what i took um issue with i also took issue with the joe kim noah story i didn't like that either when they when he was like yeah well what when you jerry told jerry we want to draft about this his guy hair talking like, about his hair i was like see this is why we didn't win like stuff like that is what gets on my nerves this is the nba you know who i accept that from the new york yankees because they have 27 championships i accept yeah. that from the new york yankees the bulls who are just rebuilding and trying to get back to something you're like we gotta do something about his hair they actually had a right. conversation with him about his hair i was right. like man dude we, the team with dennis robin this is what we talking about so right. yeah i that i took an issue with that also uh but yeah Overall, I you can't say people are just angry and mean and spewing out stuff because they want to spew out stuff. You gave them plenty of ammunition, you know, what I'm saying, as right. to why they felt that way. And now, right. uh, once again, I will step away and let Matthew Peck do it. And, and you know, Jerry's like, "Well, we got to keep his hair clean, but we, but, but but he can't have a headband to keep his hair out of his eye. That's not that's not a lot. <laughs> right. Keep it clean, but no headband. <laughs> That's a okay. great point. That's a great okay. point. <laughs> okay, Grandpa Jerry. Um, look, uh, I, I'm glad that you brought up the stuff about John complaining about the coverage of the team and what people said over the course of their tenure, because I have some thoughts on that as well, as you might have imagined. I'm Before sure. we do that, though, want to take a quick break to tell you all that today's episode is brought to you by Stat Hero. NFL season kicks off in just a few days. The first game's on Thursday, Bucks cowboys did you know that 85% of people who play daily fantasy sports lose? Honestly, is it really that surprising? The game is rigged against you. You're playing against thousands of other lineups, not to mention experts who have more tools and more time. They make algorithms about this stuff. So you don't stand a chance. Introducing Stat Hero. It's the first ever daily fantasy sports book that put a player in control and winning within reach. Here's how mm. it works. Stat Hero shows you their lineups and dares you to beat them. It's you Mm. versus the house in a head-to-head fantasy matchup. You name your stakes and winner takes all. Mm. You have the advantage. Stat Hero is showing you their lineups ahead of time. No other sports betting sites do that. You're in control. Stat Hero is DFS the way it was meant to be one-on-one. Play Stat Hero now and change the odds. So here's what you do. Go to stathero.com slash locked on and sign up for free right now you can get three times back on your first play. They're giving you a 300% match. That's unheard of. Wow. So go to stathero.com slash locked on. Again, that's stathero.com slash locked on and play some bets for the first week of the NFL season, baby. Let's go. It's about that time. And when it gets close to that time, guys, you guys, you you get a little tense. You know, you get a little sweaty. You start dripping a little bit. But now you don't have to worry about that. Why? Because the sweat block is here. It is here for you. This will stop it all. You want to know why Matt is comfortable wearing the tank today? Bow right there. Sweat block in your face. Doctor created. Doctor recommended. It works up to seven days per use. I'm talking about when I put it on a few days ago. Trust me. I've been dry as a bone for a few days now, man. It's been awesome. They have the dry shirt guarantee. If sweat block doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back and you can take that money that you get back and then go ahead to stat hero and use it. But guess what? You won't have to because it works, but they give you a guarantee, which is truly, truly awesome. It is the best seller on Amazon for the past 10 years, guys, over 13,000 positive reviews and it's manufactured right here in the good old US of A. You can wear what you want to wear, man. Like Matt's got the tank top on. It's your little secret to confidence. And when you go out of town, when you're going on a trip, or you're heading up to Peck Manor, you go ahead and you put that in your toiletry bag, baby. You slide that in there, and it'll be your little secret. People want to know why you're so dry and so cool, because you got on the sweat block. So I know what you're saying. You want to know how I get this. This is what you do. You head to sweatblock.com. And guess what? Just for going there, use that promo code Locked On, and you'll get 20% off at sweatblock.com and use that promo code locked on or you can go to amazon or you can go to cvs so there's no reason to not be dry go ahead and be cool and be dry sweat block stay dry all right carrying on with our conversation about john paxson's conversation Mm -hmm. with our guys mark and stacy you had brought up big dave some of john's complaints about the way the team had been covered and the amount of negativity that was out there what Mm -hmm. i thought was interesting 
is that the way he phrased it, the way he kind of shaped it to say, nowadays, there are all these platforms out there for people to say whatever they want about the team. Yeah. And yeah. I think what the subtext there was, was people on Twitter and people with blogs and people with hello podcasts that cover this team on a daily basis. Yeah. The content is out there because this fan base is rabid and demands it. And that's why you yes. and I are here. Correct. That is why you and I are here. We are a cool. voice for the fans. Thank he you. also talks Thank about you. how I don't like listening to talk radio anymore. I used to once in a while, but now I haven't listened to four or five years because it's so negative. It's so negative. Guess what? Sports talk radio is supposed to be a voice for the fans. Correct. And for the last five years of your job, people were calling into Chicago sports talk radio to say, Hey, these guys suck and should probably leave now. The last few times John Paxson actually went on and gave his time to a talk radio show or a pie or whatever else, he was very, very defensive and very guarded. That one in particular he did with our guys at the score. Shout out, I believe it was Danny Parkins in the afternoon. Yeah. And John yeah. Paxson said, I feel like these interviews are starting to feel like interrogations. And it was like, wow, here's somebody with some pretty thin skin. Because everybody's calling you out for, for being washed up and you're not doing your job anymore as well as you should. And the stuff about now there are so many platforms and people can say whatever they want. Yeah, guess what, John? It's the new world of social media. And this is how sports fans digest their content. Mm -hmm. And we're here. Now, a few times over our Bulls Outsiders years, we were lucky enough to get into the media, ro media room before, during, and after Bulls games. Yeah. But that was not a commonality. And back when John took this job in 2003, the Bulls were still a very strict, very stingy, organizations still are when it comes to who they grant media access to and credentials to. So instead of John having four or five beat writers in his locker room and in their media room, and only maybe one of them being brave enough to call them out for being bad at their jobs in the public and in the media. Now he's like, Oh my God, I'm getting arrows from every direction because there's podcasts and blogs and radio and everybody hates me. Well, duh. <laughs> I'm sorry. But if you can't stand the heat, then get out of the bleeping kitchen. And don't take four or five years to make up your mind that you can't stand the heat and you're not a good chef. And then try to take credit for leaving after complaining that people were too mean to you while you were failing to make something happen in that kitchen. Man, get out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, as much as it pains me to agree with Matt, yes. <laughs> I, have to, I have to agree with Matt. Like... This is the I'm truth. I'm not of wrong, it. Walter. I'm just an asshole. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's it it's I just don't like the accepting of what you kind of did, you know, and what you laid out there and what you messed up and why people like I took it as very dismissive of podcasters, of bloggers, of people like that. I took it as very dismissive to say. And it, and it felt like to me, and maybe he didn't mean it this way, but it just felt like he was saying, y'all don't know what you're talking about. You're mm -hmm. just regular old fans who, you know, come here, go on tomorrow. You, you know what I mean? Like, you just show up in the first quarter, leave in the third, and just, you just want to write something negative about us. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't know what you're watching. It's pretty insulting, like, isn't it? it? It was. I was like, yeah, I can, I can find that to be insulting, man, because we've been at this podcast game. I know myself, I've been at this podcast game over 10 years, bro. Like, Matt's been doing his thing for a very long time. Like, I know a lot of podcasters and bloggers and writers who have been at this, who are who are not who don't have those names like that, but who mm -hmm. have been at this for a very long time and who, who seek credibility, who seek respect, who are not out here just for fame and to be a talking head so they could be on television just saying something negative about this team. No, they really look at what they're seeing and they're looking at the product and they're getting the same information that everybody else is getting. And then they are giving their views and opinions on it intelligently, logically. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say like there are some sites that I think are just way ridiculously negative for no reason at all. Like just look for the negative of it. Like, period. This is what I'm going to be mad. But to act like they didn't have a reason, and it just came out of nowhere. Like, it didn't make any sense. Why are you mad? Why are you upset? Get out of here. You shouldn't be angry at this. When you make these silly bonehead draft picks, you know, when you make these ridiculous decisions and 
you know, just the, the handling of things. And it just, that's the stuff I took offense to. Because like I said, we've been at this for a while, bro. And I, and you know me, man. I don't get on here just yelling at nobody for no reason. It's always a reason. You know what I'm saying? And it has to be a very good reason. Are you accusing me, me and getting on here and yelling for no reason? Again, this has nothing to do with you. <laughs> and no, no, I would never accuse you of getting on here yelling for no reason. But Matt gets on here and yells. It's definitely a reason. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely a reason, okay? But no, for myself, like, it takes a lot for that to come up out of me, to be upset and angry. I mean, we saw the bonehead coach <laughs> that was up in here the last time. You know, we saw it. He stood by it and, and acted like he knew what he was doing. We clearly, he, you no idea what he was doing because you thought the team just needed some toughness and stuff like that. The team needed some coaching. <laughs> like, the guys needed some coaching, man. And the, the virus that he ended up being, you know, for this team, I thought was the final straw. And honestly, mm-hmm. I'm... To, to wrap this up for myself, I'm I'm very glad that all of that happened because I don't think we'd be where we are now without what happened then. I, I got love for Pax. I will always have love for Pax. I will because I like Pax, man. I know I, he's been with this organization for I don't know how long since mm-hmm. I got it, since he came into the NBA kind of. You know, I think he played with another team or two, but basically since he's been in the league, man, that dude has seen him come. He's seen him go. He's seen greatness. He's drafted greatness. But the mistakes you cannot absolve yourself from because you just right. want them absolved. You have to honor that. You have to accept that too. Uh, I'll, I'll end on this. He he stated repeatedly, John Paxson did, that he was happy for Bulls fans with these aggressive and exciting changes that we've seen in this offseason. Yeah. He kept saying, I'm, I'm so happy for our fan base. I'm sorry, but you don't get to be happy for us. You don't, you don't, you don't get that, John. You're not allowed to be a part of this happy party because this happy party is only happening because you finally left. Mm. And either you were living with your head in the sand or you knew. And I think the answer is you knew that this fan base thought that you were not doing your job as well as you should be. And you should have been gone a long time ago. I'm 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 not completely anti 110% hate John forever. Like you said, J- uh, Big Dave, three championships that this team maybe doesn't win without John as a player. One for and sure. He didn't screw up the Derrick Rose pick. Good for you. Jokey mm-hmm. Noah, Taj Gibson, Jimmy Butler, good picks. The Baby Bulls, where he flipped the roster. You got Lou Wall, yeah. you got Ben Gordon, you got Kirk Heinrich after mm-hmm. the devastating Jay Williams career ending injury. That was a good flip. Okay. There, there, in a neat little package, are your accomplishments. In 18 years on the job. 18 years. So, no, you do not get to be happy for us that we are finally happy. Because for the better part of the last decade, you were the root cause of our misery. So do not shove any of that crap into this, oh, oh, let's all just be happy about where we are now. No. No, you are not invited to this party, John. Enjoy the paycheck for doing nothing. Get out. I don't want to hear from you again for another year at least. Thank you. Goodbye. (laughs) One more thing I want to say. I'm so happy for our fans. (laughs) One thing I do want to say. I, I saw him deal with something I'd never seen the GM deal with. And that's two devastating injuries to both your franchise players. I had never seen that before. He had two of them, Jay Williams and Derrick Rose, and both of them point guards. I mean, both of them, two devastating injuries that changed your entire franchise twice. That's that's hard to do. That's tough. Did I John just want to say that. Did John Paxson fail to hire the right people that could tell Derrick Rose how to pop, properly take care of his body? Is, is a part of the Derrick Rose injury that – bankrupted this franchise's basketball success partly on john paxson because yeah the answer is you bet it is <laughs> oh. next <laughs> next ball didn't go in the hoop dave ball didn't go in the hoop all right this we, is everything i wanted <laughs> <laughs> We we are going to get to our conversation about ranking this uh, the top starting fives in the oh, Eastern Conference. Man. Before we do that, Big Dave, we got to give the people what they want. Uh, and what they want is some ad reads. Why? I don't know, but I'm going to give it to them. 
rockauto.com. Y'all know what it is with those ever increasing prices on these new makes and these new models. You got all these cars coming out. Cars are going to be flying soon. Okay, get ready for the Jetsons out here. It's going to be amazing. But now, nowadays, right now, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Now, why go through that? Why show up there? Why even go there? It stank. It smelled like stale donuts and failure. You don't want to go in there. All right. What you want to do is you want to sit in your drawers, sit in your shirt, turn on your TV and just stay at home. And now you can do that with rockauto.com. Save you some time, save you some money. Why spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts at that dealership or at that chain store? No, it's a family-owned business serving those do-it-yourselfers over 20 years. Reliably low prices for every single customer. All the car parts that you could think of, that you could dream of, that you are going to need. Rear view mirrors, tail lamps, brake parts, they got it all, man. So go into that website, easy to use website. It is easy, baby. It's like butter. It's easy to use. Go to rockauto.com, see all the parts that are available. And this is what you do. You write in locked on in that how did you hear about us section. Let them know that Matt Peck and Big Dave sent you there because that's what it is. Amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need sing it with me y'all rock auto dot com splash bellissimo <laughs>